No, honestly, this is not a book that I would just see in the library and pick up, but it is a really good book that I just read here. So, well, hello, fellow bookquesters. It is I, Aram the Bookquester, and today I have this great historical fiction slash realistic fiction book, Seed Folks, by Paul Fleischman. Not sure who that is, but he's probably really famous. And apparently, it is a very, very good book. So, well, let's get right on to it. Basically, it this book is about, well, a U.S. city. Now, this particular city is the kind of city where it's like a cheap motel. You go there, and then if you have enough money, you buy yourselves way out. And it's not somewhere you stay. It is definitely not a nice place to stay. Now, there, there are loads of unique nationalities with people with unique backgrounds who is living there. Some because they have no choice. Some because they wanted to. But... All in all, so many different people from so many different places. Now, in this neighborhood, there is a vacant lot. There are tons of rats, trash, and all sorts of disgusting stuff. But one day, a girl named Kim, who missed her father, who she had not even met, who worried that her, her father would be looking for her in the heavens, won't be able to find her because he, did, he never met her, she, she decided that since her father was a farmer, she wanted to honor his legacy. Why? By doing so, he, she plants lima beans. And so that his father, when he looks down, he sees a Chinese girl planting beans and he would know who his daughter is and be proud. And this little, and this little situation becomes quite quite expense expansive as an expand our dear then in the next chapter uh, a woman named anna an old woman named anna suspects that our girl kim has planted for example drugs guns or all sorts of bad stuff when she was burying the beans and thinking because of that she immediately thinks that whoop this girl is up to no good i gotta go and see what is going on so she went there and she and she dug out several different spots before she realized oh she's planting seeds and she tried to put it back as well as she could and then she started to think that this place this space this space and lot that no one went to that everyone just used for throwing trash out could be something a whole lot different something beautiful and this expands a lot. A lot of people start coming in, and a woman <clears throat> calls the local health care place, well, organization or whatever, and they say that this place is a health hazard, please get rid of all the trash, and finally, the tr most of the trash is removed, and a lot of people, some just for fun, some to heal their broken minds, some to relieve their stress, some to simply try to make some cash, starts to farm their own fruits and their asian chinese watermelons <coughs> okay this is going in ng 100 percent. anyway basically all these different nationalities all these different kinds of fruits and vegetables watermelons from asia carrots and beetroot and turnips and all sorts of different things the wonders of life in this garden and this is barely a hundred page book I can read it in like an hour probably less than that but it has so many so many it ha all these chapters have different people from different places with different backgrounds and I can't possibly talk about them all I just talked about the first two chapters and now I'm going to talk about the last one the last one is about a woman who and uh, last couple chapters is about a guy who finds out that this community garden it bonds people together. People who wouldn't even have dared to talk to you, talk to each other became friendly with each other because of this garden. And the chat and the book ends with a woman kind of dreading the fact that winter had come and a lot of people hadn't show up showed up for a while. But spring came and new people came into the lot and planted their seeds. And it's just so such like a beautiful arc. It all started with one girl going to an empty lot in a vacant lot 
an empty place in a vacant lot, and planting some lima beans. Then people started coming, and they started to make a difference. And this once lonely and terrible neighborhood, it became a great community, and everyone knew each other. And if it came so, if someone hurt or attacked someone that was in the garden, the people in the garden would do their best to help that person. A good example comes in one of the last chapters of the book. A woman who uh, who who had a pot in the garden, well, her purse was taken by a man with a knife. Three guys from the garden ran after the thief and caught him and held him with a pitchfork until the police came. This kind of thing wouldn't even have been thought of when before the garden. And all in all, it's a beautiful arc of stories about these different people, as I've numerously said, with different backgrounds, Hispanic, a Nigerian, from the US, etc. with all these unique nationalities, personalities, with their unique troubles, all coming together to form a beautiful garden. And the book starts at winter, it ends at spring. That got to count for something, right? And like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester, it is less than 100 pages after all, so there is that much to say, but I feel like the author really put his efforts in to show these different nationalities and just showing what a garden like that could do to the community. Have a great day. Bye.